Joining me now is Jessie Hill. She is a professor of law at Case Western Reserve University School of Law and previously worked on the Reproductive Freedom Project at the American Civil Liberties Union. Thank you very much for your time, Jessie. Should decisions about pregnancy be made by government? No, absolutely not. Um, uh, women in America have enjoyed the right to make their own decisions about when and whether to become a parent for nearly 50 years, and it's honestly quite shocking that we are about to see this constitutional right come to an end in, in the U.S. How does this draft face off against the Constitution? In it, rights, some rights are spelt out in the U.S. Constitution, while others, such as access to abortion, are mere unenumerated rights, excuse me. What does that mean? What are the judges trying to argue here? Well, they like to point out, especially judges who tend to have a more conservative, textualist bent, they like to say that, well, the word abortion and the word privacy are nowhere in the Constitution. We don't see that word. And so um, that is part of their basis for determining that the right to end a pregnancy is not part of the Constitution. Um, but, you know, you can point out that lots of other things are not written into the Constitution either. Certainly even the right to procreate, to have a child, um, is not written into the Constitution. But um, it's something that certainly we've uh, taken for granted and assumed was a constitutional right for a very long time. Well, exactly, exactly right. The same argument could be used in the case of gay marriage for IVF. Uh, certain forms of contraception, and that's something that Biden warned of today. How seriously should Americans be taking this warning? I think very seriously. I mean, the, the position that the court is taking today really um, is, seemed unthinkable not too long ago. And I think that although the Supreme Court, in the current draft of the opinion, seems to go to great trouble to say that abortion is different, don't worry, these other rights are secure. There's really nothing in the logic of its opinion that would suggest that those other rights are protected. As you just said, the rights to contraception, to same-sex marriage, to all sorts of personal intimate decisions are not explicitly written into the Constitution, and they have not traditionally, you know, since time immemorial, been protected in American society. And so I think they are all vulnerable. They're all on the table right now. From listening to conservative activists celebrate this draft uh, in front of the Supreme Court this afternoon, they talked about the idea that abortion will end if you made it illegal, perhaps forgetting the stories of abortion before Roe was here. Could you paint a picture of, a picture of what underground abortions would look like? Well, that's right. First of all, all of the evidence indicates that abortion bans do not stop abortions. Abortions will happen no matter what, um, almost in exactly the same numbers. Uh, the one thing that is different today is that there are safer forms of abortion that can be managed without, you know, clinical help, without physicians. Um, there are medications, some are even available on the internet, that can help people early in pregnancies end their pregnancies on their own. That being said, you know, we just don't know how many people will be able to get access to those medications, will um, have the, the knowledge, the internet access, and the, the means to do that. And there will always be a need for people to have abortions later in pregnancy. And those folks are going to be seriously at risk. This is a, obviously an, an international audience that are, that are watching this channel. So if the court does overturn Roe, it will fall on our nation's elected officials at all levels of government to protect a woman's right to choose. Will this galvanise people to vote in a particular way that could potentially uh, reshape the midterm elections? You know, that's the million dollar question. I mean, we certainly hope that so. We certainly have reason to think that will be the case. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I don't take anything for granted right now. Some states in the United States, especially Texas, have been in a, in a pre-row or, or post-row, I guess I should say, um, world for a while now. And I'm not sure that, um, that, that it's really galvanized the political uh, energy that, that we might have thought especially with inflation so high, post-pandemic, that sort of thing. But a very, very interesting time in America today. Jesse, thank you very much for your time. Jesse Hill yeah. for us there.